Passover recalls and celebrates God setting the Israelites free from slavery in Egypt and bringing them into the land of blessing. The Gospel accounts of the Last Supper align very closely with the traditional Passover celebration. And in Luke 22 we read, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. When the hour came, he reclined at the table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. I wonder what effect those words had on the disciples. They'd celebrated Passover with Jesus before. They'd prepared the meal and they'd all sat down and Jesus was at the table. But this Passover meal was different than all the previous ones. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. It was a special time for him. He eagerly desired spending time with them around the Passover meal. He was there with them, but he knew that he was about to die. And later, after the resurrection, he told them that he would be with them to the very end of the age. Did you know that he's with us even now, right here? His promise is that his presence will always be with us. And he's with us now. Jesus wants to meet each one of us at this table. I believe he's saying to all of us, I have desired eagerly to eat this with you. Come and meet me at the table. We all have different needs. We're all in different places. And Jesus knows every one of us. And he wants to meet us. So as we come to this table, we're just going to spend time with him alone. <coughs> we're going to take time to sit quietly with him. Look at Jesus. See the love in his eyes for you. Talk to him. Ask questions. And most important, listen to him. What is he saying to you? So can I ask that we have nobody praying out loud at the moment? We'll have time for that later on. We'll just sit quietly before the Lord in his presence.
Rest in my love. Relax in my care. We're going to listen to that song now, sung by Marilyn Baker. If you want to join in, please feel free. Thank you. <coughs> bring comfort and strength. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand and sing to be in your presence. <coughs> Jesus personalized it and changed it forever. This time he added, this is my body. In effect, he was saying, this is myself. Laid down and given for all of you, myself. Jesus gave everything that he was, everything he had had, absolutely everything for us in order to give us life. Bread is a staple food. It's a dietary, basic dietary item. And when Jesus had said previously, I am the bread of life, in other words, he was saying, he is essential to life. He is the spiritual bread that brings eternal life. We have to forsake all that the world has to offer and follow him. He is who he says he is. He does and will continue to do what he says he will do. He is the only one who can and does. <coughs> he will satisfy every hunger and thirst. He will satisfy every need. In fact, we know that he does satisfy. And in the wine, in Leviticus we read, for the life of a creature is in the blood. And I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. You see, the old covenant required the blood of innocent, guiltless animals, repeatedly sacrificed to make atonements for the sins of the people. And when Jesus came, he came to fulfill the requirement of innocent blood and to make that final sacrifice for sin. He took the cup after supper, the cup that's called the cup of redemption. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, shed for all of you. You will remember that the high priest entered the uh, Holy of Holies in the temple once a year on the Day of Atonement to sprinkle the blood of sacrificed animals. A bull offered as atonement for the priest in his household, and a goat offered as atonement for the people. And he came to offer incense upon the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant. He entered through that veil, that thick curtain, into the Holy of Holies that spoke of the presence of God, where God's presence was. 
Do you remember too that the veil of that temple was torn in two from top to bottom at the moment Jesus died? Indicating that his sacrifice was accepted and now man could have a restored relationship with God. The writer of the Hebrews said, but when Christ came as high priest, he did not enter by means of the blood of goats and bulls, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Can you imagine Jesus walking into the Holy of Holies, carrying his own blood, that blood which is acceptable to God, to bring atonement for each one of us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. Cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. It's almost too wonderful for us to understand, isn't it? He gave himself. He gave everything he was. Before we take communion, let's stand and sing when I survey the wondrous cross. These are not just symbols of what happened a long time ago. They are to remind us that Jesus is with us present now. He's not just a memory. The table is set. Jesus is here. Come and believe. Come and eat. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the living bread from heaven. Jesus said, This is myself, my body given for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of all that I have done for you. But the service might to come up. No, no. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, the cup of redemption, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's give thanks for the wine. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the true fruit of the vine, Jesus, the anointed one, our saviour. The service would like to come. I think now would be a, a good time for us to pray for those in our fellowship who are sick and ill and in need, um, just to say that Daphne lost her sister this morning. Sorry. Her daughter was reading
evening, Alice and her daughter was reading to her the 23rd Psalm when she passed away. <coughs> Daphne, how prayers with you. And uh, is there anyone else who needs a prayer that we can pray for? Let's, let's pray. Oh, Father God, we thank you so much for all that you have done for each one of us. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is reigning on the high, that he is indeed the risen Lord, and that his blood cleanses us from all sin. And Lord, we lift those who are grieving at the moment, with Daphne, who's just lost her sister, and, and Alison, her niece. Lord, will you withdraw your arms of compassion around them, where they know your presence. Sustaining them and comforting them. And Lord, for Sheena and, and for Brian who've lost, lost family, Lord, will you have your way in their lives? Will you bring your peace? Will you fill them again with your Holy Spirit? May they know the comfort of your presence. And Lord, for any amongst us who are sick, we, we just ask, Lord, for a healing touch on them. We thank you, Lord, that the word says that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, will you heal and will you restore and will you bless and comfort, Lord, that we might know your presence with us day by day, that we might learn to be led by your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you for this time together. And we bring you our praise and our worship. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing King of Kings, Majesty. <clears throat> and then we'll just have a few moments where you can pray or speak out scripture or share. And then we'll sing our final song. And I'll give the notices at the end. Keep it, keep it up, everyone. Okay, let's stand and sing in Christ alone. 